Hello, Frizzle Formation! Today I'm very excited to review for you the last 10 books that I've read. I'm going to be talking about these books in the order in which I read them, except I'm saving the best for last. So my very favorite book of this batch I'm going to be reviewing last. So you have a little thing to look forward to. The first book that I read is Silent Blade. This is a novella. It's a sci romance. I liked it, but there were some things I didn't love. This is following a heroine. She is an assassin. She's very good at it. She has this power to manipulate these plasma blades with her mind. It's very impressive. And then our hero is the man that she has been tasked with killing. In order to get past his defenses and get close enough to kill him, she starts trying to form a relationship with him and seducing him. And definitely those parts were entertaining, the very enemies to lovers of, ooh, is she ever actually gonna pull this trigger? There, there was a big thing in this book that made me not love it though, <laughs> which is the guy very much has the energy once he starts falling for the girl of like, you are mine, whether you like it or not. I don't care if you want me, I'm gonna be your new boyfriend. You're mine now. And like, <sighs> That's just never gonna be romantic for me. <laughs> Credit where it's due, the hero in this book never actually acts on these words. His bark is much worse than his bite, but still. How can I ship a couple when one of them has said out loud that they don't care about the consent of the other? You know? Like, I understand on some level why some people find this hot, because like, it's that escapist fantasy of like, someone wants you so much that they like, can't handle any other situation. But like, yeah, it just bothers me too much. <laughs> Without that detail, I think this book might have gotten in four stars for me, but I think we're round to get down to three stars. Just a fine little novella. I enjoyed parts of it. <laughs> and its book tone is Resolution Blue. Book tone is a reader personality type system. Resolution Blue means that this book is emotional and character focused. If you want more details or you want to take the test, I've got that all linked in the footnotes for you. Next up, I read Akata Witch, and I was so pumped about this one. It's pitched as like the Nigerian Harry Potter, and I'm like, yes, give it to me now. And, and, then, I, and then I read the book. And <laughs> We are following a girl whose parents are Nigerian. She was born and raised in the United States, and then when she's about 12, her family moves back to Nigeria, and it's her dealing a little bit with that upheaval and trying to make new friends there when she's an outsider. And then the friends she makes are part of this secret magical society, and then she also joins the society and finds her own magic. And the world building in this is super cool. It definitely has that Nigerian bent to it that's different from a lot of Western world building and magic systems, and like, I was very much enjoying all of that. However, However, I was not enjoying other parts of this book. For example, <laughs> this book has like no stakes for so long. Like it's just like making friends, but it's not really like, is she going to make friends? It's just like, oh, here's the friends. It's learning about magic, but it's not, can she actually succeed in magic? It's, oh, good job. You are the new chosen one. You're so good at magic. <laughs> and like, there was no struggle, no stakes to the plot. I never connected with the characters that didn't care about anything and like, I ended up DNFing this book. Because our protagonist is also so frustratingly passive and like nothing gets explained to her. Like we are sitting here for so many chapters where she's just like, guys, tell me what's going on. And then her friends are like, we'll, we'll tell you later. And then that just cycle repeats for chapters and chapters and chapters. And then when you finally figure out some of what's going on, like it's not even satisfying and like, ugh. Um, I can definitely see how some people could love this. I think if you're in it for the world building, it's a great book. If you're in it for the plot and characters, not so much. So I gave Akata Witch two stars and its book tone is Unmellow Yellow. If you've read any other books by this author, Nettie Okorafor, let me know if you think I'd like them because I am interested in some of her other books, but after this experience, I'm a little hesitant. So please let me know if you think I'd like them because I would like to jump into some of her other books. Then I read Thrice. This is a high fantasy book and it is following like one of my favorite tropes, which is the gruff parental figure and the really cute adopted child. <laughs> so this book opens where we were following this man and he is like a berserker. He's getting into all these fights. He's getting thrown out of town. And then he has a really cute adoptive son who is pretty good at magic and might be the chosen one. And like, I loved their dynamic. I love the contrast between the sweet, innocent son and the gruff old guy and the struggling of parenthood through all of these dynamics. And like, oh, it's so entertaining. And I was really, really loving the beginning of this book. 
and then I kept going. And this book, it didn't have quite enough like plot to prop itself up. Like the beginning hooked me. I was so invested in these characters. And then I kept following these characters. And where did it go? Uh, scenes of boring dialogue and info dumps. <laughs> Traveling around can be interesting if there's new conflicts and stakes being introduced, but there weren't until like the very end when it also introduced like a bunch of plot holes and I was just sitting there going like, why are they doing any of this? What is, what is happening? And that was my reaction to most of the book in the second half. And we really got a deficit of the cute child scenes, which is what enamored me so much with the first half of this book. And we also got a deficit of like the fun berserker scenes, which was such a good contrast in the first half. Anyway, so uh, two stars for Thrice. <laughs> and its book tone is Xanthus Orange. I then read The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi. And I had such high hopes for this one. I'd seen it on so many people's like favorite books of 2023 lists, and I was ready. I loved some books by this author before, I liked some, depending on the book. <laughs> And jumping into The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi, my first impression of it was so negative, and I almost DNF the book at like the first page. The book opens with like a scribe telling you, like, I'm about to tell you about the adventures of Amina al Sarafi, which isn't bad in itself, right? I'm down for that. But then it went on to be like, and this story is feminist. It's not like those other pirate stories that have men in it. We only have some men. It's about a woman. And guess what? She's powerful. And that's why this story is important because it's feminist. And I'm like, I am all for feminist stories. I love them. But I do not want a preface to the book, like disrespecting me so much that it doesn't even trust me to pick up on the book's feminist messages. Like if you want to put that as an author's note at the very end, okay, whatever. But like my first impression of the book being like, I don't trust you to pick up on this book's themes, so here it is spelled out for you. Like, how dare? Like, I was genuinely kind of feeling offended, and I was like, is this book for children? Like, is this young adult? No, it's marketed as adult. Like, who decided that this was a good idea to start the book off with? Because not only was it very condescending, it was also boring. Anyway, but then once I got past that prelude, the book actually got better. So, this book is following a lady pirate in medieval Indian Ocean territories. She was once in her youth the most awesomest pirate of the Indian Ocean, super famous, etc. And then now she's retired, she's living at home with her 10 year old daughter and her mom, and she's having an okay time of it, a little bored. And then she is coerced to going on another voyage to go rescue a kidnapped daughter of one of her former crewmen. So she sets off on the high seas to go get the old gang and crew back together, and then sets off on this quest. I loved the questing part a lot more. I felt it was really fun to root for Amina. She was very likable and fun. I liked her internal conflict of like wanting to get back to her safe life with her daughter because she cared so much about her, but also really actually loving this adventure back at the high seas because she's missed it so much and trying to reconcile those two worlds together. As she's going on the adventure, things also get more magical, encountering things like sea monsters and hot charismatic tricksy demons Yes, the demon was my favorite character of the whole book, and every scene he was in, like, yes, A plus to that scene. But I was also kind of disappointed by the ending, because despite some of the plot threads getting wrapped up, so much of it, like, that I was really expecting to get a resolution to in this book just doesn't, and I just have to wait for the sequels, and I'm like, I hate it when books do that. Like, yeah, leave some sequel bait. Like, yes, Amina is going to go on more adventures. Great, I will read that, but like, the thing you've been teasing and stringing along for the entire book doesn't get an ending? Come on. So I definitely had a lot of fun with this book. I was debating for a while between three stars and four stars, and I think I'm settling on four stars, but it's a low four. <laughs> but I'm definitely excited to see where this series goes. I think I could definitely enjoy further installments even more than this one. And the book tone is Anchor Grey. I then read The Do-Over. This is a young adult rom-com with a time loop element. I was definitely intrigued by the time loop element going in, but I was also a little apprehensive because I'd read one other book by this author before and like absolutely despised the main character. So jumping into this one, how'd it do? Though I didn't like absolutely love either our protagonist or her love interest, I didn't hate them either. So managed to get through the entirety of this book. I did love how it did the time loop elements. I'm always a sucker for that story of like the monotony of the loop and the days repeating over and over being a vessel for good character arcs and 
finding enlightenment and just like ah it's so cool our protagonist is very much like an organized type a kind of girl where she's got her whole life planned out and she knows exactly what she's going to do on this day and the next day and she's got a schedule and a to-do list and then her time loop day is where everything in her life falls apart. She loses her scholarship, she finds out her boyfriend is cheating on her, etc. And then it takes her a while, sometimes an irritatingly long while, because this book does end up feeling repetitive, what are you gonna do? To move on and restructure her life and really find out, okay, what do I actually care about in the absence of all of these goals, which I can't even accomplish more anyway. The love interest was totally fine. He was quiet, loner boy with a heart of gold who they bond with over the course of several loops. And it was kind of weird that she was in the time loop and he wasn't. So it felt like she had so much more bond with him than he had with her. It was a little uneven, but still interesting. And I liked it. But in the end, my impression is like, yeah, it's a fine book. I think I'd recommend it if you're a big fan of time loop romances or YA rom-coms, but outside those groups, meh. I gave the duo over three stars and its book tone is Byzantium purple. I then read Foul Days. I saw this book being pitched as like an urban fantasy similar to Dresden Files with a real witchy element and a good strong beat of romance and following a strong female lead. And I'm like, yes, that checks every single one of my boxes. Let me pick it up. And let me tell you guys, it doesn't check any of those boxes. <laughs> And this is kind of my fault, right? I did not look into this book past that review I heard of it, and obviously that reviewer, like, did not know what they were talking about. The blurb, which I didn't read before getting into this book, actually pitches it as being similar to the works of Naomi Novik. And specifically, I think they're trying to refer to Spinning Silver and Uprooted, and I do think that that's good comp titles for this. Anyway, so I was really disappointed in this book, but also if I had known that it was being actually compared to two books which I didn't love, then I probably wouldn't have picked it up in the first place. <laughs> so what is this about? This book takes place in we have this magical city that is full of monsters and witches. The people in the city don't want to live in the city of monsters, but there's like this impenetrable wall around them. And there's like a little bit of trade between them and the people on the other side of the wall, but they're really isolated. And we are following this girl and she is a witch in this city and she's really passionate about fighting off the monsters. She wants to educate the people on how to fight off the monsters. She's kind of frustrated. They don't always listen to her. And she's about to face a few big new conflicts in her life. One of which is there's kind of this demon king who comes around every year and it's time for him to come around again and he has this fixation on her and she's trying to get away from this situation. And another thing is through a series of events at the beginning of this book she is thrown out of the city and now she's experiencing outside life without monsters and she's a little out of sorts and she's trying to get back in to the city of monsters. And along the way, she like picks up this sidekick who's this police guy trying to solve this case. And like, there's supposed to be a romance there, but I did not feel any chemistry. It was like this book handed me the barest breadcrumbs of tropes and was like, make your own romance. And I'm like, no, that's not how this works. <laughs> like this book is so wrapped up in its world building, which is kind of cool. And the protagonist's dark backstory, which is mysterious and interesting. And you get little bits of it throughout the book that it like forgets to like give the characters good personalities or banter or even like I was confused about what their goals were from scene to scene. It was not well blocked. And this book was so lacking also in emotional reactions. Like our character would lose everything. It would be so dramatic. Everything was gone. And then the character would be like, oh, okay. And I kept waiting for like emotions and reactions and it just didn't come. I gave Foul Days two stars. And its book tone is Xanthus Orange. I then read The Imaginary Corpse, and this is one of the strangest books that I've ever read, and it was so silly and playful and like also dark, and I kind of loved all that. So we are, so like, I can't even explain this book. It takes place in like imaginary friend world. When you forget your imaginary friends, they go to this imaginary friend world. And our main character is a yellow stuffed animal triceratops who is a hard-boiled noir detective. And then imaginary friend world is also the place where your particularly vivid nightmares end up. So that can sometimes become a problem for them, but they're pretty good at making friends with the nightmares anyway and acclimatizing them to the society. And Taylor enters into imaginary friend world a super nightmare who starts killing the imaginary friends permanently. And then Detective Tippy is on the case. And like, this book was such an interesting mix of like 
having some real horror undertones as like these characters were dying and everything but also like our protagonist was always trying to emphasize like being kind and nice and reaching out to people and like trying to save the day through the power of friendship and understanding which was really wholesome and it was also interesting that like our protagonist that wasn't always his first instinct. Like his first instinct would be to like headbutt someone because he's a triceratops or ask them belligerent questions because he's just a detective and then he'd always have to like table those. Be like, no, we are acting with kindness today. And that was like fun and refreshing and interesting to follow. Throughout the entire reading experience, I wasn't quite sure if I like really loved this book or really hated this book because like I had both emotions in spades. Like I just told you all the reasons why I liked this book and the things I thought it did really well. Um, but also like the tone changes in this book were so jarring. It was really hard to like get into a groove. I didn't like really love or connect with any of the characters. Kind of failed to get invested in any part of this book, despite me wanting to and finding a lot of parts of this book, especially the world building, like really intriguing. I really want this book to go out there and find its audience. So if this book sounds appealing to you, you should totally pick it up. But also I think I'm gonna give it three stars. And this was a book that I picked out of my TBR jar. This is a jar where my patrons could submit names of books and I pick one out and I have to read it. So now that I've completed The Imaginary Corpse, it's time to pick out a next one. If you're interested in submitting a book to the jar, I would be so happy to have your suggestion. Right now we only have two left, so this is definitely the time to submit if you would like a very high chance of me picking your book very soon. You can do that through becoming a patron. You can do the lowest tier here on YouTube memberships where you also get participation in the book club and early access to my videos. You can also sign up for the higher tiers on Ko-fi, where in addition to everything you get bonus videos behind the scene content and up to personalized book recommendations and merch by me. So here's the moment of truth. Which of these books am I reading next? Ugh, I'm so excited. We got a submission from Striped Wolfie, Valor's Choice by Tanya Huff. I think you've recommended this book to me before in the comments, and I think it's already on my want to read list, so this is very exciting. <laughs> Adult female protagonists, cool aliens, nice sci-fi, awesome supporting characters, space marines fast-paced, a healthy romance that develops in the later books too. I'm always down for a sci-fi romance. Yes, I'm very excited to read this. I then read Brown Girl in the Ring. I heard about this book because I heard it being pitched as kind of one of the vanguard books of the urban fantasy genre and I wanted to explore more of that history and like it was so unlike pretty much anything else I'd ever read and like so cool. So this takes place in a futuristic dystopian version of Toronto. The guy in charge of the biggest gang keeps his rule over the city through dark magic. The magic system in this book is very much based in Caribbean folklore, which is so interesting and cool. Anyway, this gang leader, he's got control over like ghosts and zombie things and stuff. Very fun. And then we are following a woman and she's just trying to go about her normal life in the city. And then she gets tangled up in this gang plot where the gang is looking for a good heart donor for this corrupt politician and they want to kidnap someone off the street to do it. And then everything spirals weirdly from there. A big player in this book is also her grandmother is a local healer who uses both manufactured drug medicines when she can get them and also more herbal medicines and even Caribbean style magic cures. This is a book with a lot of like ghosts and spirits and gods possessing people and seances and it's like so full of life and color the way that these spirits and magic permeate so many scenes of this book. Now for my taste I felt like this book was a little too slow paced, a little too meandering in its plot. I did definitely love the ending. I loved the big arc of this book but for a lot of individual scenes I did find myself kind of bored. I think you have to be really here for the fun vibes and world building. I'm gonna give Brown Girl in the Ring three stars. I liked it but I didn't love it and its book tone is International Orange. I then read Dawn Shard. This is book 3.5 in the Stormlight Archive book, and this is the last book in the big Cosmere universe that I had left to read. I've been putting it off for literally years at this point. <laughs> and there's a little bit of a story of how I actually came around to picking this book up. So me and my husband Seth were driving around a lot in the past few weeks doing some road trips and stuff and like we needed an audiobook for the car. We started out trying to listen to Brown Girl in the Ring, 
But that quickly, uh, it was hard to keep our attention, both because of its slow pace and because the narrator, who is awesome, went really all in on the Caribbean accents and dialects that the book has for a lot of its main characters. And that, and that on top of the car driving noise and the vents and everything made it really hard to understand even what was going on from the dialogue because we just couldn't quite hear it right. So I had to table that audiobook and then it was time for Seth to choose our audiobook and he chose Don Shard so I could finish the Cosmere. Thank you. And like, well, I got to give it to these books. Like, my relationship with the works of Sanderson has been going downhill in the past few years as his writing style and my taste have been more and more diverging, but like, his books are so readable. It was such a contrast to Brown Girl in the Ring where I was really struggling to like follow what was going on while listening to the audiobook, and then this audiobook, like, immediately so easy. Just the way that the writing style lays everything out so cleanly, which I don't always love, but is definitely a pro for a road trip audiobook. This is a novella following some side characters from the series where they are going off on an ocean voyage to explore a mysterious magical haunted island, and along the way discovering different interesting things about the magic system. So I was loving a lot of this book, honestly. Part of that was the fandom aspect of listening to it in the car with someone else who also loves the Cosmere and getting to bounce theories off with each other and really talking about the larger implications and the characters and everything. Great. But like in the end, I can't say that I loved this one. And the reason for that can be epitomized by like this one scene nearish the end where like the intense action scene pretty much stops and the protagonist gets possessed by a literal exposition dump and she just spouts exposition about this magic that like hasn't been relevant to anything before now in the book and is barely relevant to the situation right now or the future part of the book except it's shoved in there and it's just like the epitome of prioritizing this world building and you gotta get this info dump about Don Shards right here and like <sighs> can we just focus on character arcs or fun plot or stakes or anything. Like, I don't care about the Don Shard! <laughs> which is why it took me so long to pick up this book called Don Shard, which has, honestly, if you're going in for Don Shards, disappointingly, a little amount of Don Shards. So I did enjoy my time with this book, but in the end, it gets three stars. Do you need to read it? No. But should you? I guess if you're enjoying the rest of the books in the series, might as well. And its book tone is Xanthus Orange. As you can see, this was quite a month for oranges. Orange is not my favorite book tone type. And as you can see, this was not very much a month for five stars, but let's see what I rated my favorite book of the month, because it's time for talking about my favorite book of this batch. This is The Grief of Stones. This is the second book in the Cemeteries of Amalo series, which is kind of a low magic series that follows like elves and goblins, but they don't really have much magic, except our protagonist has the abilities to talk to the ghosts of the recently departed. So his job is part like priest who officiates at cemeteries and stuff, and part paranormal investigator into murders and stuff. And this book follows him partly through some investigations, but through a lot of just like soul searching, trying to make friends. When the book title is The Grief of Stones, I feel like that so encapsulates the mood of this book. Like it's so melancholy and slow, but then through that melancholy slowness, it becomes like almost a cozy book. Where yes, a lot of this book is kind of the one note of like, oh, look at that. I guess I failed another case. <laughs> but then it feels so heartwarming when our protagonist goes to one of his friends and gets support and comfort through all of that. And like, yes, there are some interesting mysteries throughout this book, but they're also kind of like low intrigue. I don't even know how to pitch this book. If it's interesting to you, there's ghost monsters, opera singers, little orphan girls, there's old ladies starting new professions, and there's someone working through an old grief. We're like, prior to even the start of the series, our protagonist had a lover who died, and that kind of threw his life into shambles, and through the series he's slowly rebuilding it, and slowly overcoming grief while experiencing new setbacks, but then finding new places for hope as he gets a new support system. It's equal parts melancholy and heartwarming, and I'm just in love with this book. I'm in love with this series and I'm very excited for the next book in the series to come out, I think next year. So I'm going to give The Grief of Stones four stars. Yes, it did not get a five star in this round at all. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Hopefully five stars are coming soon. And the book tone is Thistle Purple. Thank you so much for watching. And if you liked this one, I think you'll love watching another one of my recent reads like this.